everyone and welcome back to another tactic video. So today I've tried to listen to you guys the best I can to look at things and uh, make stuff a little better. Um, I know that I personally have a style I want to do, but it can be tough at times. It's just it, difficult to record and there's lots of things uh, going on. Things are not always the easiest to do and it can take some time to get stuff done. But I want to give you guys the best quality tactic videos and there's things I want to do and stand by and they're important to me. And stuff like having to good tactical analysis and really going through a lot of the tactics and the understanding of the team are important to me because that's what I love to do. I've been an opposition analyst for various different uh, levels and stuff like that in the US. So it's for me, it's important and it's stuff I like to do and I've been paid to do. So I think it's important that I use those skills to help you guys out and uh, make these tactics because, you know, that's what I want to do. I love to do this. I want to do it for a living and that's the opportunity I want to have. But uh, yes, it is a uh, sometimes difficult to put in all the time as I still am trying to find a job. So not the easiest with that, but you know, that's how life is at times. And I'm going to keep giving you guys the best I can. So with this, we are going to slightly change the way we do tactics. I think from now on, we are going to do a shorter analysis. I'm going to try to keep the tactical analysis to max 10 minutes from there. We're going to be going into things such as we're going to look at things like goals, build out structures, pressing, things like that. We'll usually try to do build out a goal or two goals, depending on how they do it. And then also things like the pressing as much, which can sometimes be there, can sometimes not. Um, we'll see how that goes. But those are three I usually want to do as the three things I tend to talk about in tactical analysis are usually build out uh, goals as well as how they defend. And I want to try to keep the tactical analysis do a little quicker, but mainly go from starting at build out, going into the middle third, going to the final third, and then going uh, into how they defend uh, from the front, as well as how they defend deep. And those are kind of the, the stretch. So we'll start at the back, work our way up and then work our way back. And that's kind of what I want to do from there. We'll go through the clips of how things are, and then we'll get into the team itself. We'll really keep that really brief. Now. I think we're going to keep the FM itself brief. It's going to be a quick look at, Hey, here's the, um, here's how the pass map looks. Here's how the positions possibly look as well. And here's some like, big results kind of thing that happened like really quick going through those. Here's how they did in the table. Here's the top stats. And here is how the tactic worked. And we'll keep it kind of brief in that because I think I want to focus more on the tactical analysis. And that's really important to me. But with that all being said and all of that big chaos, we're starting this journey off the new style of tactics, the suggestions of things like that with Hirona. So they are awesome. They're so fucking cool. I love these guys. The, what they've done, the style of learning about it, taking the time to do this stuff. It is so, so interesting. And I really, really enjoy it. And, um, and yeah, it's just an awesome tactic. It's so, so, so cool. Um, I'm going to have it pop up right next to me right now. So boom, there it is. There's our Drona tactic. Um, cool. I, I honestly just clicked a button or no BS. I'm not that fancy. Um, there might be a way to add a transition there. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but this is our tactic for Hirona. As you can see, it's slightly skewed to the right. We'll get into why that is. Um, it's a neat tactic. I really like it. It's super cool. And, um, yeah, we're going to get into things. Let's start with the tactical analysis and then we'll go through the new style for our tactic videos. All right, guys, it's time to talk tactics with just Corona side. So. The main thing is the team looks to set up in a classic 4-3-3. Uh, it's pretty much the most basic thing you really will see them do besides when they defend. But um, really the team itself is looks basic when you just see them normally set up. But things get really, really wonky because the team likes to move around a lot and have a lot of rotations. And this creates really interesting looks for the team and things looks look very different and completely change from what you'd normally expect. So one of the things we're going to do is go through that a little bit today. It turns about how they look in the attack and defense and other things along those lines there. But I think first thing to do is we start talking about their build. -out. Is this where this is all going to come from? And it's going to all really make the shape adjust and change and do all these things from there, which I think will be more interesting to talk about. So when the team looks to build out, they usually pick one side to build out to left or right side. This team, though, tends to do things very differently on either side. So to do that, I think we're going to make a box that goes down half the pitch so you can see what I'm talking about. The team is pretty much, they do things very differently on each side. Oh my God, I didn't mean to do that. 
Um, but they do things differently on each side of the pitch. But I want to do this just so you can understand how it goes. So on this side of the pitch, the team will look to build it usually on the right. So the wing back will push wide here. The, this center back will push there. Half back will come into this area here. This guy will shift over here. He will stay kind of high and wide. He'll come over into the middle here. He will drop into this area. This guy will come over here to here. He will kind of sit a little further out there. He will stay very high and wide up over here. And the team will almost look like this. So you'll, you'll usually have this shape of five here. So you'll normally have this. Yep, there we go. So you normally have these kind of five players in a bunch, like this here. So that's kind of the main group you'll see. And I'll show you guys an example when we do look through some of the footage on Y Scout. I do make a little picture of that so you can see what I mean. But this is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the thing itself. This is what you see a lot in the buildup with these guys. The ball is almost always exclusively played to the right center back or the left center back when they start their buildup. It's rare to go to anyone else. It is almost 99% of the time those two, if the press is too much, they'll play it back to the goalkeeper. He'll hang it, he'll smack it long into Dovbiak or Stuani, whoever's playing up top, and or he'll play it short to one of these guys and they'll pass around. And this is usually the shape you get when it comes to the passing because they'll look to have all these different angles and stuff. Because if you do look further into this, we have lines here, we have lines here, you have lines like this. I mean... You can just start connecting everyone here and you can see all the different passing lanes and triangles that get created through all of this of the ability to do different things. So there's lots and lots of options available here for them to do. There's also the opportunity to clip it into these guys, but that doesn't happen as much. Usually they look to pass around themselves in this kind of group here, trying to get something out of it. And then the, and then if they can't get something, they usually switch it back this way and they try to get into space. But usually these guys will pass around here, moving, passing moving like doing this letting the ball run to him getting the staircase going here and then they can do it but they'll pass around in this area here looking to create an opportunity to get the ball out of this zone and move it higher up the pitch where usually he will come there he'll sit here this guy will push kind of up into this space here he'll be more central he'll kind of be in this zone the wing back will be up here and you'll see these guys he'll come out more to be like a left back there and you'll see the team kind of look more like this as it gets higher up the pitch. And the thing will kind of be around this. And this is what you'll look to see when they're around the middle third of the field. In the middle third of the field, they're still going to be pretty compact to the right side. But now what they're going to do is look to play one or two passes here before hitting a long switch to the opposite sided winger here. And that's the big thing they're going to look to do is they're going to hit that big switch into that opposite sided winger where he will then be able to get the ball and have acres and acres of space so let's get a circle he'll have all this room here to run into and this will be his he can just do whatever he wants in this space he's isolated one-on-one -on -one, hopefully against the defender like that he can't do anything he's up one-on-one -on -one against them he can do whatever he needs take them on beat them do whatever and get crosses in because then this guy crashes this guy crashes this guy crashes they all crash the box usually uh Usually either the left back or one of the center mids will crash into this space here. I'll show you guys when we show the clip of the of one of the FM buildouts. The FM buildout, uh, it, the player gets into this space and gets an opportunity for for scoring. But one of these two will attack this space because what it'll do is is it'll pull all the defenders away by them attacking these areas. Another will set up for for a cutback. He'll kind of hang around here. He'll usually kind of come up here. He'll be around here. Or actually, he'll push forwards a little bit more. He'll kind of sit around here and he'll sit around here. And you'll have that kind of shape almost with these guys kind of sitting on the edge. This guy running in here. And you have two cutback options. And that kind of ends up being what the shape is once they get the ball switched wide. Is you have the shape of a 3-2-5 because usually he's down here by the time that happens. So he's over here by the time that happens. So you have your 3-2 to five shape which is exactly what we want to say and what i do talk about in the little excerpt there so if you're three two five shape here which is what we're looking to see of this three two five shape it allows them to do a few things they can cross here they can look for cutbacks here to these guys like this who then can do stuff there or sometimes they'll have players come out and they can combine so they'll try to then maybe combine between the three of these guys in this kind of like area over here 
So trying to get a little circle going, combining, pull players in, maybe a pass here. Actually, he's going to pass there, fakes it, ball goes in behind, he's got it here, boom, cut back and goal. So things like that will happen too. They'll try to combine out wide if need be as well. Mainly the goal is build down one side, hit a switch, get the hit a switch to the isolated winger. The isolated winger will get the ball, drive the opposition, try to get a cross off, or try to then, if he can't, stop the ball, combine with the extra players he has here before looking to get a cross or building the ball into the box there. And that's generally what you'll look to see them do. Now, what also can happen is, is if they're struggling to get enough bodies into the box, the team will also try something a little more like this. These guys will kind of come out a little more, um, almost, and you'll get this shape of a, um, what is it again? It's a one, three, six. So you get that. So in essence, you'll get this guy dropping off here. These guys will kind of come either side. These guys will be here like this at the balls over there. And you'll have almost a shape like this nearly, where you have your two guys on either side. You have your three here. They're usually skewed to the center. The side that has the ball, the other, the opposite side of the winger tucks in more. And you'll have a shape almost like this, where it's a one, three, six, which is insanely risky. But the amount of opportunities it creates because it suffocates the opposition. You have to have numbers back because there's six guys, five guys ready to crash this box. What are you going to do? There's five guys in here. This guy will be here. They'll combine here to create something. Maybe you can swing it around. Sometimes they'll swing it all the way and then they'll, the ball will end up over here. Everyone will shift a little bit over or whatever like that. And now he's coming inside of the box. So it just, it's so difficult to deal with because there's so many bodies they get forwards. And they'll be in a one three six or a two or a three two five where there's just hordes and hordes of them because you, and you have to drop your whole line. You have to drop everyone deep, or you're giving away a free header or a free chance to someone on the edge of the box or in the box for you. And that's a goal at the professional level. So you have to bring everyone back. Now, let's not be stupid here. This is very risky. It is an incredibly risky tactic and it is one that gets Hirona burned a lot. But they score so many goals, it really doesn't actually matter. And one of the big things, obviously, is the attacks into these areas here when they're in this shape or when they're a little deeper like this. Is, um, in essence, in shapes like this, is uh, if one of the, if these passes in these areas get picked off, they're done for a wide. And that's what does happen a lot. They get caught in transition a ton. And it can be really, really difficult for them to defend. But they have really quick wingbacks and players that are really fast and athletic that are able to work hard and get back. Now, on top of this, Hirona does tend to press from the front, and they do look to press to suffocate you and stop you from being able to get out so that you don't have to, they don't have to worry about sitting deeper in a block because they also don't particularly do too well when sitting deep. Their line tends to be a little higher. They can get caught out at times. I mean, look what happened against uh, Atletico Madrid. When they do look to sit a little deeper, though, they will fall back into a very traditional 4-4-2 to defend. And, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get the players in the right positions. Sorry, just doing my best here. Um, the center mid, it'll depend on the center mid that steps up. Uh, it can kind of be whoever, just depends on, on whatever these two can interchangeably do it. Um, but usually this is what you'll see is the traditional 442 for the team. That's how they'll sit deep. Um, they do sit a little higher though at times which can get them caught out because there's some space behind and we saw against Murata did that quite well with Atletico Madrid but that's pretty much just a quick little synopsis of how the team plays and what they look to do in terms of that shape and structure uh now we're going to get into some clips and uh, we're going to look through some clips of how things go we're going to go through stuff from goals from crosses goals from balls in behind uh the build out shape as well which is going to be pretty important and uh and yeah that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty much the what we go through. I hope you guys uh, did enjoy the quick little synopsis. I wanted to keep things slightly quicker if we're going to do more clips, so I hope you guys are enjoying that. But yeah, with that, we'll also get into the uh, the tactic and how that worked afterwards as well. So into the clips. All right, guys. So in this clip, we're going to be looking at the uh, build out structure of Hirona here. So obviously, we talked about it before. How they heavily skew to the right side and build up, and they'll push lots and lots of players there. So we don't really go over the shape too much. But as you can see, as of right now, we've just got the goal. We've just got the ball. It's about to start with a goal kick, and the team has already set up this way. Now, unfortunately, in FM, they don't really move until the 
it set. So like they they've kind of moved. Obviously, the right, the left, the central player is here. The right center mid is here. The right back is here. The uh, right center back's here. The half back's here. So they've kind of but the left back hasn't inverted too much yet. He's coming inside, but he's not there just yet. And the wingers are both uh, wide, and the strikers central. So it, it, it takes a it takes a second or two once there's like one or two passes. But you'll see what I mean. The shape works really really well because so he needs to be coming into this space here. He is going to push a little wider here, and he'll come a little more central here. And sometimes the goalkeeper will come up. But as you guys can see, so let's turn this on the uh, medium. It is on medium. Okay. So you guys can see your first pass always to that right center back. Now you can see much more of the shape. So he's there's the back three here. The right mid, the right, the right wing back is here. The other players are here. So you can see this is the central line, the skew of players all on this side here. And these guys here, he's going to come into this side and Blin's going to move on. You'll see what I mean. Shortly, one more pass here. It should happen. It happens. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I told you, it takes a second or two for FM to go, oh, you should do this. And it, it finally works. So now you see Blind is moving out here. He should really be a bit further here or him come up a bit. But for some reason, they don't always do it. But Gutierrez will slide into this space here. And you can see, though, how heavily outnumbered it is on this side and how much Mallorca is pressing us over here. All the numbers over here, there's openings here, openings here, but you can see this shape now. All the bodies in terms of the passing angles and the lanes, and even Dobrik is over here as well. You see this more passing. They're just taking their time, and that's the other thing. They're taking their time. They're not rushing things, is what we talked about. They're making their passes, and now look, the chance to switch it is on. Sagankov, we've passed through their lines, bypassed their press. Sagankov has time. Now he's going to push over to the other side, where Savio is hopefully going to be in space. And look, We've pushed over to their side. This guy comes in. Look at all the space Savio is now in. And we're going to look to play the switch. So Gankov switches it to Savio. It's a smart little pass here. Herrera shoots and scores. Now, obviously, we don't... The shot and goal, that's kind of cool. But the big thing here, mainly, is this is the thing we talked about. They play down this right side. He gets it. He goes to drive across or play the ball across. Boom, and Savio is in all of this space because we've had all our players, like Gutierrez, sitting here, not over there. So Gutierrez is here, he's pulled players across, like this guy here is waiting to cover Gutierrez. This guy here is covering Blind, meaning that there's tons and tons of room for Savio. And that means as well, because of that, this guy now goes out to Savio, look at all the space that's left right here. Herrera goes, I'll take that space, takes it, one touch, finish. Obviously he gets aided by the deflection off 21. But still, it's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the way they build, the way they build the heavily down the right with all the skew, they, come up, they try to pass a little bit, Move it here, there, get the opportunity to play through your lines. Once they do, they get it, switch play, boom, opportunities arise in those half spaces where Gutierrez makes runs or the center mid makes runs like Herrera. I talked about in the thing or even in the description, you'll see where I describe it, that it's sometimes the left back, it's sometimes the center mid that makes that further additional run into that space there. So 100% how we want to see them play because it mirrors the style of run exactly. Now we're going to take a look at the real life example and see how quickly, uh, how quickly, how perfectly they match up. Okay, guys, here is a clip of build out in real life. So one of the things also Jordan will do is, is they'll swap the side they build out on at times as well. Um, it's just easier at FM to make it one way. So one of the things they're doing in this is building out down the left here partially. So they're taking their time. They're passing around. You can see the shape, the, the players we were talking about, obviously, with all these guys right here, kind of in this shape right here. We can add a drawing. Oh, one moment. <laughs> as it takes its time. I've clicked the draw button and it's taking its time. There we go. And it's now off center, whatever. Um, but you can see what I'm talking about here. So we have uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. So there you go. In terms of there's your, your grid of players we were talking about before, all connected in that way, all part of each other and all in that group. Which is actually what we were talking about in terms of it, where they're all all next to each other, and they're all really helping each other by shifting over so much to offer opportunities and passing angles for all of it. And you have the opposite player giving you the width there as well. And you can see they get it to the other side, they go, oh crap, we can't go this way. And then you see that long switch to the winger on the opposite side who's in acres of space who then loses the ball but 
that's pretty much what it is. It's just how do you show the switch? How, how do they switch it? What do they do when they do switch it? And the build out of it and that shape they have in the build out with all those players together, giving those easy angles as well as pulling the opposition onto them, allowing them to switch play into space and then switch back or just go down one side and then switch to the opposite side for space as well. But it matches it really well. In our clip in FM, he beat the guy and scored. In this, he loses possession. But one of those things that are similar and just showing you guys the example of it. So here's another example of a goal. This one is the cross. So as you can see here, the passing in between uh, the line, just trying to get through the press. And this is a big one here. This is the left back, Gutierrez, which we were talking about. He comes into that left center midfield role. One, two, three. Those are your three center mids. There's your half. There's your six playing as that extra center back. And if we look out, uh, if we make this bigger, we can see where's Daily Blind in the left back role. There's your back four. There's your three. There's your front three. Exactly what we were talking about in it and the way they build and the way they do those things. So we've got it perfectly set to how we want to see it. We can go back to director since it's not as much. We get it laid off to Gutierrez who cuts inside. He's pulled this guy, meaning Sabio now has a one-on-one -on -one against the fullback. What we want to see. He gets it. He goes. Stuani makes the run into the box. He's playing striker. Cross. Header. Goal. Exactly what you want to see from the team. Exactly what we were talking about in terms of the way they build, the passing through the lines, getting it out, and then going out to the other side and scoring a goal. 100% what we're looking for with this team. Now, let's check out the real-life example and see how well they match up. So here, guys, is an example of a crossed goal. So you can see they get the ball here, get it, play it around a little bit. You can even see the shape we're talking about. You can see these guys here. You can see all their players forwards here. There's one guy over here, but you're one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have your one, and then you have your three as well. The one back here, your three as well over here. Ah, play. There we go. It's a goal from across. Exactly what we want to see. but. They got all the numbers forward, the guy's crashing the box, there's loads and loads of people in there, and it's just so easy for them to score goals from it. And that's why they score so many goals, they have so many guys in the box and in that area. So here is the final example of what we talked about, the ball getting played in behind. So we can see here, we've got all our bodies on this side, uh, we're passing around, the press isn't as intense from Batiste, but we're able to get through, and their line is pretty high, meaning there's space in behind, Torreira eventually finds his pass to Dobvik, who can run in and score. Obviously, it's a little deeper than um, than other times, but that's the goal there. Playing the other goals, but that's the goal we're talking about in terms of getting that chance and ball in behind on it. If we see, again, just from the different angle, if we see here, we have all that tight bodies together there. Now, come on. One sec. There you go. Now you can see where he is. So he's hanging on that last line, hanging on the last line, Chance to go now, passes played, touch, finish, and goal. And that's the big thing. So it's just trying to be able to also play through the lines where you can get a chance to play our striker in behind and you can score a goal like that. That's exactly what we're looking for. So here's an example of a goal that is one where it's getting the ball in behind. So we can see here, on behind, there's a chance. Player makes a run in behind, the line step tied to come onto the press. When we've bro broken the press with that run, the guy dribbled through instead of passing. And then the chance to play in behind, the ball's playing in behind, they had another runner as well, but usually you'll have one runner. But that's actually what I'm talking about, is there you get it, you dribble to get through the line of pressure, or you pass get through the line of pressure from the opposition, play the ball in behind, and then you get a goal from it. It's exactly what we saw from our clip, it's similar to this clip as well, and that's exactly what we want to see, and I'm so happy we've been able to recreate it so well. Okay, so as I said, this is going to be much more brief now. So, I'm just give you an idea of how Hirona did. Um, after the 30 games, they finished in seventh place. They made the semifinals of the Copa del Rey, finished in seventh place, uh, one point behind Sociedad and three points behind Hetafe. So did really well. Same points as Bilbao, but I guess they won the head to head. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how head to head works in Spain. I'm assuming it's like goal difference. Um, so they managed to win the head to head as well and finish in seventh, which is really good to see. Um, the team did really uh, fantastic in terms of what I was hoping for. Um, again, ninth best in terms of goals, seventh best in terms of allowed. I was hoping for that to be a little higher, both to be a little higher. Um, but, you know, it's like we can get it still did work out as I was looking more to get what the team did and built out and those shapes right. And then it also might just come down to the players. Um, Stuani played, it looks like a lot more than Dobvik, uh, which could be a problem as well. I don't know. It's 
I didn't play these games. I had my assistant run them because that's how I do the tactic. Um, I don't want to play them because I will inherently do more stuff and I want things to, um, I want the assistant to do it because I want it to be a better, I feel like when I have the assistant do it, it's a better level of an average of the average FM player. It's going to be easier to deal with the, the worst than the best. Best, you can make the tactic better. Worst, you might make it worse, but I feel like it's a decent average. And also, it's just, then there's no personal bias of how I want to adjust things in game. I just think it works so much better that way. But yes, that is a, that is a tactic in terms of the team. Just a quick look around. Stuani, 17 goals. Savio, the most assists. Uh, sorry, the, the second most goals. Most assist went to Yang El Herrera. Uh, pretty good overall. Um, we do obviously look wingers did quite a good job. They had a lot to do in this, which is nice. The main center midfielders that did a lot as well had a lot of goal contributions. Lovely to see. Winger again. Big left back. A good amount as well. And Doviak as well, who played a lot of sub games, still had some good amount of goals. So you can see pretty solid impact in terms of that. If we go to the schedule and look at some of these games just to see some of the heat maps. Um, as well, as you can see, it's pretty basic kind of what the heat map is, but it's definitely skewed a little to the right. If you look at the passing network, it's heavily to that right side, which I talked about. You get that kind of those five players over there. This guy tends to shift a little more over and stuff like that. If we go into the game, I'm sure if we look at, um, analytical data, here we go. Players, Hirona, uh, sorry, no, I need teams, Pos not positions. Possession. Positions. Ah, I just need us. No, let's go 45, because I hate when they double up on top of each other. As we can see, though, it does skew a lot more to this side with the players. Like, they're more heavily shifted to the right side. There's not as much on the left. Um, So, with Ball, you can see he's, he's sitting more there. He's tucked in a lot more. They're kind of the back three. He's on the next line of people. This guy would have wished a little further, but you can kind of see what I mean in terms of he's much more isolated out there. He's tucking in a lot more. There's a lot more congestion towards the right side of the pitch. Without the ball, you can see that they're much more uh, defensively oriented in a certain way. It's much more. It's not totally a 4-4-2. It turns them into a 4-1-4-1 more than the 4-4-2 in real life, which is kind of annoying that it's not the same. But, you know, we'll take the 4-1-4-1 as they were actually better defensively in this 4-1-4-1 than in the real life 4-4-2. So... I'm not complaining there, but yeah, as again, you can see the passing networks though, really high and wide, giving you that width. He's there much more connected. So it hit it on the money. That's just obviously one example. You'll see all the other examples. Uh, you've seen all the other examples already from the clips and things, but yeah, that's pretty much how that one is going to look, but into the tactic now. So we have a custom tactical style. This uh, is a 4-3-3 with the central midfielder in the, instead of it being someone right here, he's actually in the middle like this. So, superkeeper on support with tackle harder as the additional instruction. Wing back on support with stay wider and get further forward. Ball, win, uh, ball playing defender on cover with stay wider and tackle harder. This makes sure he stays deeper, especially when you're playing in the final third and you want to get that 1-3-6 uh, shape. This makes sure that he sits that kind of furthest back for it. And that's what we want to see from that. The ball playing defender on the left is dribble more and stay wider. This will encourage Blind to come forward as a left back more, sometimes even pop up in these areas here. The inverted wing back on attack has no additional instructions as he actually just does exactly what I want normally. Comes inside into these areas. I will say though, occasionally it takes one or two passes for him to get in there. I do mention that in a little clip, but just something to be cognizant of. Box box midfielder on support with stay wider. The roaming playmaker in the middle with no additional instructions. Here you could um, change change it to a role that it has get further forward, but I would also possibly encourage moving to channels at times if you don't feel you're getting enough out of him in terms of into the attacking half, as you want this guy to be your kind of deeper player. But uh, you have your half back on defend, no additional instructions there. He is perfect in how he's doing things. Finally, we have a winger on attack on the right with no additional instructions. The winger on the left is on attack as well with cut inside of the ball as Savio gets it on the wing. We want him to drive inside this guy, not as much as there usually will be players here. So we want him to possibly decide between either based off what opportunities arise. Finally, advance forward on attack at striker with move into channels. So that's what we're looking for there. Actually, no lot loads of individual instructions. There's a lot less, uh, but it works quite well. 
Uh, the mentality is balanced. In possession, the team is fairly wide. They look to focus play down the right with underlaps on the left. They have a standard passing directness with a slightly higher tempo. The team has low crosses and looks to hit early crosses as well. The team likes to look for a lot of cutbacks as well as kind of lower hit crosses. They're not really lofted. They're more kind of clipped balls into the box, which is why I have lower crosses on. It doesn't always work, and if you're having issues, you can change to mixed crosses. But I found that with the mix, they would loft them more, where this, the lower crosses tend to work a little better. They could do whipped as well, but I felt lower crosses was the best. Again, feel free to do mixed. And if you uh, want to control the ball a little more, you can take off hit early crosses. But that was kind of the best that I found in terms of the way the team played. Now, uh, I also dribble less on, which encouraged the team to build out through passing a little more and hit long switches over dribbling as much. Now, we have the team counter pressing and countering. Sorry, counter, counter pressing and countering. They look to distribute the ball quickly out of the back and take short kicks. This will encourage the goalkeeper to get out of his hands quicker, which is what we want. We don't want him to hold on to it too long, as we do want them to move the ball around the back, but it doesn't have to be as intense. Now, just to remember, you will be looking at this screen to make sure we ensure it goes to the right center back. You're going to click this little white drop down arrow, hit distribute to position, and then select that guy right there. So distribute to position, select the right center back, and boom, you've now made sure that you always distribute to the right center back. Finally, your out of possession instructions are going to be high press, much higher line of engagements, much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and step up more. This is to pull the offside trap, as they will try and do that, mostly because their line is so, so high and they play so aggressively. So, that is your Hirona tactic, 4-3-3 Hirona. Um, I did make a defend as well. If you guys do want the defend, feel free to uh, have it. I just was trying to play around a little bit with something, but that's something really that you'll need. Um, I would just try to use it to make sure that I could get the defensive shape right. And it worked out in the end at times when I wanted to use it to defend and stuff as Hirona do defend at times using that, but I wouldn't really worry about it. I would just make the individual adjustments in game as I felt that was more useful than having the tactical switch. But yeah, that is your Hirona tactic. If you have any other uh, questions or suggestions, please do let me know about that. But yeah, that's your tactic. Hope you guys did enjoy and it's time to roll the outro. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching our Hirona tactic. I hope you guys did really enjoy this one. I know I tried to listen to feedback best I could and really make a bit of a different video for you guys today. It's obviously the same as what we've done, but just making sure we add more stuff from real life and from FN and really making it a clear, cohesive thing of why I made things, why I made decisions, what we want stuff to look like and how things are supposed to work out in those ways. So thank you again, everyone, so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy. Remember to like and subscribe if you do. Keep those suggestions coming. My list is gigantic. <laughs> um, I am really legitimately like, I have no idea how long it's, it's going to take ages to get through all these, but I love it. I love that you guys go. I'm like looking at it now. I have tons going down here. It, it's in front of me, um, but I love it. I love all these suggestions. Keep them rolling in. The more the merrier. Uh, if we don't finish them now, we'll work on it in FM 25 or whatever like that. But I love it. I, it's really, I, it's fantastic. Um, if you guys also, one thing I want to ask, uh, if you, I have another channel, RPJ Scouting, where I've done some scouting stuff uh, for real life that I've done. Um, if you guys are interested, if you want me to do more tactical analysis and tactical breakdowns of teams, like just expand on what I've done here a little bit and just make it more real life, let me know. I'm happy to do those uh, as well in kind of cohesion with this because I do enough tactical work for these videos that I can easily translate that into other ones. So let me know. I'm happy to do that and just make it simpler and just kind of give you like a shorter form video, maybe 15, 20 minutes talking through the tactics of teams. And, uh, and yeah, it's pretty much this, but we just expanded out a little bit more and a little more detail on some things. So yeah, let me know. I'm happy to do that as well, but I'm also happy to keep making these tactics on top of that. So let me guys what you want to do and more interested in that. I love all this stuff. So yeah, thank you again, everyone for watching. Uh, I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one, where we'll be heading over to Italy to focus on Tiago Motta's Bologna side.